In this lesson, I will show you how to navigate the Photoshop document using the Zoom tool, the Hand tool, and the Rotate View tool. For this lesson, we can work with any image. So, you can open any image from your computer or use this image that you can find available for download in this lesson. Let's start by looking at the Zoom command. We can activate the Zoom tool by clicking this icon with a magnifying glass in the Tools panel. With this tool selected, every time we click on the document, it will zoom in. This happens because here in the Options bar, we have the Zoom In option active. If I click on this magnifying glass with a minus inside, when I click on the document, it will zoom out. A faster way to switch between zooming in and zooming out is by using the ALT key. So, we can leave the zoom in active, and every time we want to zoom out, we can keep the ALT key pressed and click. That way, it will invert the tool and zoom out. And when we release the ALT key, it returns to normal. You can also simply click and hold the mouse button or pen down. After a while, even with the cursor stopped, it will start to zoom in or zoom out if we hold down the ALT key. If we have this scrubbly zoom option active, we can either leave the mouse button or the pen pressed and move to the right to zoom in and to the left to zoom out. This way we can zoom more smoothly. If this option is not available for you to check, you can go to the Edit menu, Preferences, and click Performance. If you have a compatible video card, you can check this Use Graphics Processor option. After checking this option, close and open Photoshop again. With this option checked, you will be able to use the Scrub Zoom option. If we don't have this option checked, when we click and drag with the cursor, it will make a window. And when you release the button or the pen, it will frame whatever is inside the window. As I like the soft zoom more than this window, I will leave this option enabled. And finally, here on the right, we find these 100%, fit screen, and fill screen buttons, which allow us to make these predefined frames with just one click. Now, let's say we have some other two selected and want to use the zoom. We could certainly click on the zoom tool button to use it. But since the zoom is a tool that we use a lot, the ideal is to use a shortcut to not have to leave the tool that we are using all the time. The shortcut to the zoom is the Z key. But pay attention to this. If you have another tool active, press the Z key and keep it pressed, you can zoom in by clicking and dragging the cursor to the right or to the left. And when you release the Z key, the tool that was previously selected is active again. If you simply press the Z key without holding it down, Photoshop will effectively activate the zoom tool by turning off the tool that was selected earlier. Another very common shortcut to use the zoom when we are working with the mouse is to use the mouse scroll while holding down the ALT key. Without pressed, if we roll the screw forward, we zoom in, and if we roll the screw back, we zoom out. Now I'm going to talk about the hand command. We will use the hand command when only a part of the image is framed on the screen and we want to move the frame to another place. To activate the hand tool, simply click this button with this hand, which is on top of the zoom tool. If this is not the tool that is visible, you can leave the button pressed for a while. This way, you will see a small floating menu that hides other tools. All the buttons that have this small triangle in the lower right corner have this menu with other two options. In this case, we have the options of the hand tool that has this hand icon and the Rotate View tool that we will see next. 
If we have the Hand tool active, when we click on the document and drag anywhere, we will see that it will move the frame along with the cursor. The shortcut to activate the Hand tool is the H key. So, if we have another tool active and click the H key, the Hand tool will be activated. However, this is also a tool that we use a lot, and usually we do not want to disable the tool that we are using, just to pan the documents to the side. So, if I have another tool active, I can simply press the spacebar, keep it pressed, and click and drag to pan the documents in different directions. When I release the spacebar, it deactivates the hand and the tool that was previously selected is active again. Now, let's see the Rotate View tool. As we have seen, this tool can be activated in the floating menu that we open while holding down the Pen Tool button. With this tool active, we can click on the document and drag to rotate the document to one side and the other. We can also set the angle by numeric values in this field up here or click Reset View to leave the document straight again. Rotating the document in this way may be interesting for illustrators when making accurate strokes in a drawing, in the same way that we can rotate a sheet of paper to make strokes at an angle that is more comfortable to us. If you want to rotate the screen without having to activate the Rotate View tool here in the button, simply press the R key and click and drag in the document. While the R key is pressed, the Rotate View tool is active, and when we release it, the tool that was selected before is active again. The Rotate View tool also requires that the Use Graphics Processor option is enabled inside the Preferences window. As I said earlier, you can enable this option from the Edit menu, Preferences, Performance. If your video card is compatible, you can check this option here. These are the three tools needed to navigate the Photoshop documents. But beyond that, we can go to the Window menu and click on Navigator. This will open a panel with a thumbnail of the document. We can resize the panel by clicking on the borders and dragging. In this window, we can also control the zoom of the document down here, and control the pen by clicking and dragging to the sides in the thumbnail. In addition to being able to assist in navigation, this navigation panel can also be useful for us to have an overview of the document when we are working with a very closed image framing.